Hey guys, ooh, right in the eye. Holy crap. Oh, yuck. Did I get it out? I guess I should start over. Hey guys, Richard here with Downgrid Survival. So today's topic is about bug out bikes. And this isn't something that's talked about often uh, in disaster prepping type channels, but it is something I want to address because I do have another channel called E-Bike Reviews and Adventures where I uh, go out and I do a lot of e-bike riding. So I've gotten quite familiar with e-bikes uh, over the last six months or so, and I want to share with you some thoughts and ideas about what makes a good bug out bike. So let's take a look at a couple that I have here. Okay, when considering bug out bikes, so one of the first things you got to consider is your budget. You know, what can you afford? And e-bikes come in a variety of sizes and styles and features. And they can range anywhere from about you know five or six hundred dollars if you buy something real cheap on Amazon to several thousand uh, dollars. So that's the first thing. You know you got to look within your budget. But here's a couple things to consider uh, when you're looking at e-bikes. Uh, one, they can be used for alternate transportation in the event the grid goes down or there's a shortage on gas or anything happens uh, that necessitates that you be still be able to get to work or maybe go get some supplies or some groceries. And it's, you know, it's, it gives you an alternate mode of transportation. And so that is one of the great features about them. Another is what if you have to relocate? What if you have to go somewhere? You know, so you want a bike that is more than capable of being able to do that. So when considering a bug out bike, after considering your budget, look at capability of that bike. Now they make bikes that um, barely carry the rider and not much else for as, as far as cargo. And then you have bikes like this one over here, like this mock wheel Scoria. You know, it has a 400 pound rating. So who, whatever size the rider is, plus uh, the cargo that you can carry on it, you can go up to 400 pounds. Now, many of these bikes offer options such as a bike rack right here, which is typically pretty small and doesn't offer a, you know, a lot of space to be able to strap something down but they do sell larger baskets that cover a larger area that allows you to you know, get more stuff on there and maybe even stack it up higher. And of course, you'd want something that allows you to uh, carry some stuff on the front here. This is no longer considered a girl's bike, by the way. It's, it's socially accepted to, uh, to ride a bike that is considered a low step, which is that design right there. So you don't have that high bar up here because it's much easier to get on and off especially if you've got cargo stacked up back here you don't want to be able to try swinging your leg around and over to get on your bike right so you definitely want something that is a low step getting back to cargo capability uh, other things you can do is you know outfit your bike with uh, different bags and things to be able to carry additional stuff i have a handlebar bag here they make bags that go right here on your seat post they make bags that attach to uh, the down tubes and of course they make paneer bags, saddle bags that hang off the back. So there's lots of options to be able to add additional cargo and supplies. Then of course, you always wanna consider, um, you know, a trailer, having a trailer to be able to carry some additional items. You can get uh, child-friendly trailers or you can get pet trailers, which is what this one is right here. And this one's designed for dogs up to about 65 pounds. And of course, little Toby there, Toby. Toby is not 65 pounds. He only weighs about 16 or 17 or something. Uh, so that means, you know, I could shove Toby back here uh, into that little cart and still put some cargo back there with him if I had to. So cargo capability is probably uh, one of the things you may want to consider. The next is range. Just how far can you go on an e-bike? Because, you know, some e-bikes especially your uh, lower price ones, they're not gonna be able to go very far and everything's based on the size of the battery. And that's the battery right there. So you might find an e-bike that has what's called a 10, 10 amp hour battery. And you know, with your weight and some cargo on there, you might be lucky to get uh, 15, 20 miles, you know, depending on your terrain. If you have hills and things you gotta deal with. But then you've also got you know, bikes that have much larger batteries and we're talking up to uh, right about 20 amp hour battery and the battery in this bike is hidden right here in the tube, which is nice. So a 20 amp hour battery, you know, you can easily go 50 miles, uh, maybe even 60 miles, again, depending on how much weight you're carrying 
and how much you're willing to work as far as pedaling. Now, most of these e-bikes, you can operate them where you go throttle only, just like a motorcycle, and you just hit the throttle and go. Or you can do a combination of pedaling, uh, which does save your battery, which is going to allow you to go much further. Okay, now the next component to really consider when shopping for an e-bike to use as a alternate transportation or even uh, for your bug out scenario is the motor size. And typically in the United States, these motors come in about a, a 250 watt, a 500 watt, and 750 watt. And both of these bikes right here are 750 watt. And honestly, that's what I would recommend. You can probably get away with a 500 watt motor. It just means you may not be able to go as fast and you may not have the torque to get up and over hills and things. So, you know, consider that where you live, where you're headed. If you're going to have a lot of terrain, you know, hilly terrain, then you'll definitely want to stick with the 750 watt motor. Now they do make bikes that are dual motors. So there's a motor in the back and there might be a motor on the front as well. Uh, those are very powerful bikes and those are also great options. But those bikes are quite a bit more expensive as you can imagine. You will find some retailers that will sell uh, a bike that has a 1000 watt motor. And in fact, I do have one of those bikes and I'm not gonna show you because technically here in the United States, you're not supposed to have anything over 750 watts. Uh, and this retailer got away with it, which is fine, but uh, I'm not gonna show you that brand. Now guys, there's a lot of other features that you can, you know, we can sit here and talk about, but those are the main considerations that you wanna look for uh, when you're considering a bike for alternate transportation and or to be able to use as a bug out bike. Uh, you know, other features might be whether or not it has hydraulic brakes or whether it has manual brakes. Hydraulic is better, a little more expensive. Whether or not it has front suspension, whether or not uh, the front suspension is spring or if it's hydraulic. So there's a lot of things there to consider as well as styles. You know, the two bikes that I'm showing you here are considered a uh, step through because it's got that low step right here. This one right here is considered a mid-step because it is a little higher in its design and it's a little harder to get on and off, but you can still do it. And then of course the high step bikes are the ones that have the bar that goes all the way across right here. Uh, I would definitely stay away from those. But like I said, there are other features. Oh, and here's, here's one that I probably should mention too. You will find bikes that have different size tires, okay? And one of the things you definitely want to do is make sure you get yourself a fat tire uh, because this is great for all terrain because you never know if you're going to be going you know uh, strictly down the street uh, down a, a concrete path or if you're going to end up going across grass and and rough terrain or whatever so make sure you get a uh, fat tire a fat tire bikes typically are four inches wide okay and they do come in a couple other sizes which is uh this one is a 20 inch tire okay so it's a 20 by four is how they how they say that which is uh, it's a really good tire, really good bike, and it allows the bike to sit just a little bit lower, so it's easier to get on and off for people who uh, maybe are a little shorter. I'm pretty tall, and I still prefer a 20 by 4 tire. Okay, this one over here, you know, this is a 26 tire. This is a 26 by 4, so it is considerably taller, which makes the bike overall taller, which is, again, great for people who are, you know, rather large, um, but... You know, I'm a pretty big guy too at 6'1 and, and about 245 pounds, so I can ride something that is a 20 inch tire just fine with no, no problems at all. Now something else to know is some manufacturers make bikes that are specifically designed or sold as cargo bikes. And this is considered a cargo bike just because it has a 400 pound capacity and it comes with a front basket and you can get a basket on the rear. And there's nothing else really that makes it different or special. But there are some manufacturers that offer uh, additional attachments and things. You know, not just the baskets on the front, but they might have child seats that you can attach to the back. Uh, you know, larger bags and things of that nature to put on the back. And just some different nice little features. So, you know, you can look for a cargo style bike. And it may give you, you know, more options for whatever the t type of things that you're going to be hauling. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope uh, that was helpful to you just a little bit. Like I say, jump on over to my other channel. Uh, e-bike reviews and adventures and you'll see a lot more uh, e-bikes that i've uh, i talk about i've discussed that i ride and you can get familiar with them there you're always welcome to reach out to me and ask questions i'd be happy to answer some questions for you if uh, if it you know if i can 
But uh, if this video has been helpful to you, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Help this video spread far and wide. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe because we've got some interesting content coming right up. And until the next video, be safe.